الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم نبعه. So as we left off the last time, we talked about which is the heart of this book, or it's the main important aspect of this book that we were taught that we've been studying, Alasulu Falata, which is the three principles. So we reached the point where the author <coughs> of the book is speaking about the three principles. And the three principles has to do with the questions of the grave. That means when we die, all of us will be questioned in our grave. Bismillah ta'ala. That when the uh, when uh, we die in this life, we'll be questioned in the grave, and that is a introduction or a beginning before we uh, begin the life of the hereafter. And that is, as we say in this life, this life uh, is this life, the life that we're experiencing now. Then we have the life in the grave, which is al barzakh And after that, then all of us will be raised on the Day of Judgment. So, this book, Usul al is asking those three questions, or it is built upon around those three questions. So, the Sheikh who wrote the book, he said, فِيدَ قِيلَ لَكْ مَا لَسُولُ الْفَلَاثَةَ عَلَى تِيَجِبُ عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ مَعْرُفَتَهَا فَكُوْ مَعْرُفَتَ عَبْدُ رَبُّهُ وَدِينُهُ وَنَبِيُهُ مُحَمَدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ So the Sheikh said that if someone asked you what are those three principles which is an obligation upon all people then you should say uh, that everyone needs to know who their Lord is meaning who Allah is, this is what you're going to be questioned in the grave. You're going to be questioned with three questions. The first one is, who is Allah? The second one is, uh, who is your prophet? Or, or what is your, your religion? And the third one is, who is your prophet? Or who was Muhammad? The prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you'll be asked those three questions. The first one is, who is Allah? The second one is, what is your, your religion? And number two, uh, and number three, you'll be asked, and who was the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So those are the three questions all of us are going to be asked in the grave. And again, that is the main point that this treatise or this book was uh, written to inform people and remind people of the most important things that we should focus on in this life and which gives us the purpose in this life and that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone that Tawheed of Ibadah or Tawheed which relates to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is the most important thing that we could ever focus on and it is the goal and the focus of us in our life. As Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنِ وَالْإِنسَ لِيَعْبُدُونَ That I have not created mankind and the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. If you need a pencil or a pen, there's this one. This is my pencil. I don't know if that's going to work for you. Then, so, then in the treaties, after discussing those principles, then the Shaykh said, فِيدَ كِي لَكْ مَنْ رَبُّكْ فُكُوا رَبِّيَ اللَّهَ عَلَى ذِي رَبَّانِ so if it is said to you, who is your Lord? Then you should respond by saying, my Lord is Allah, the one who raised me, the one who is my Lord. وَرَبِّي جَمِيلَ alamin بِنِعَامِهِ And He is the Lord of everything. He's the Lord of everyone and everything. And that is from His ni'mah. That is a part of Allah's favor upon us as the creation that he is the that he is our Lord because he's so merciful. He created us and he gives us, he sustains us, as we mentioned before, he is our Rozak, he provides for us. He sustains us. He blesses us with with uh, the opportunity to seek forgiveness from him and to worship him and do those things which please him. And he gives us the benefits that we receive in this life. And if we act in accordance with Tawheed, then we'll receive the benefits of the hereafter. 
وهو معبود ليس لي معبود سواه ودليل قوله تعالى الحمد لله رب العالمين. So then the Shaykh said that the, uh, that you should say when someone asks you who is your Lord, you should say uh, my Lord is Allah, the one who raised me up, the one who uh, he is uh, what he is the one that I worship, and there is no nothing other. There is no one else worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the evidence from the Qur'an is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all of us know where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Fatiha, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Which means, Alhamd, Alhamd is praise. And when it, since, it has, since it says Alhamd, this means all the praise. That there's no exception. All praise, alhamdulillah, all the praise belongs to Allah, Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the worlds. Allah is the creator of the heavens and earth. He created thing and he's the Lord of everything. وَكُلُّ مِنْ سِوَى اللَّهِ عَالَمْ وَأَنَا وَاحِدْ مِنْ ذَلِكَ الْعَالَمْ And everything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was from the alameen was something that Allah created. And I, meaning us, are one from that alam, meaning Allah created us. Did Allah create you? Yes. Alhamdulillah. What about you? Alhamdulillah. Allah created everything and everyone. فَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكْ بِمَا عَرَفْتُ رَبُّكْ فَكُلْ بِآيَاتِ وَمَخْلُقَاتِ so then if it is asked to you, if you're asked the question, how do you know your Lord? How do you know your Lord? So someone who doesn't believe in Allah, they might ask you questions like this. How do you know there is Allah? How do you know your Lord? Cave to Allah. How do you know Allah? Then you should say, the Shaykh said, فَقُولْ بِآيَاتِهِ وَمَخْلُقَاتِهِ That I know Allah by His signs, his ayat, and when we say ayat in Arabic, we're talking about signs in general. We mean the ayat kawniya uh, wa ayat shariya. Ayat kawniya means ev uh, everything in the creation, all the signs in the creation. Ayat shariya means the Quran. It means the ayat, the verses in the Quran. So we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by two Two things we, we uh, the two two different kinds of ayat. What are the two different types of ayat, uh, Rashad? What are the two types we just named? How what what ayats do you know? You know you know the word ayat or ayah. What is that talking about? What does that mean? Mm. You don't know ayat? You never heard the word ayat before? What is it? You don't know what ayat is? Is it this telephone right here? No. What about this bookmark? No. Okay, it's verses in the Quran. That is the ayat shari'a. The ayat koniya, meaning related to everything else uh, that's created aside from the the ayat shari'a is the signs in the creation. For example, when we see uh, when you watch National Geographic, for example, the wildlife or animal kingdom or whatever it is, and you see those beautiful animals, you see the hippopotamuses and they have babies. You see lions fighting and hunting. Those are signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are Ayat, those are signs that we see them, uh, those are evidence that Allah is the creator of the heavens and earth. And those are his magnificent signs in his creation. We see that subhanAllah, the mother, she carries a baby in her stomach for nine months. That's a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is amazing. SubhanAllah. That is, those are the ayat koniya that has to do with things in the creation. The ayat shari'a deal with the Qur'an, the verses of the Qur'an and so forth. Also, 
the Sheikh said, uh, ayati wa makhlukati, also through the things that were created in the creation, that we see many fascinating things in the creation. That, those are, uh, that is what Allah created. Who created the, what's your favorite animal? Yeah. The goat? Well, that's a strange animal to, to love. I never heard anybody love the goat like that, but mashallah. Well, goats were created by who? By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is signed in the creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. And of His, His majesty. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the goats with their horns and, and all the other things that goats do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them. And if we were to really study them, I'm sure we'd find many fascinating things about that animal and many other animals. Those are the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those are also evidence of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists and that Allah is the creator of the heavens and earth. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ يَلَيْلَ وَالنَّهَارُ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ وَمَنْ مَخْلُقَاتِهِ وَمِنْ مَخْلُقَاتِهِ يَا سَمَوَاتِ يَا سَبَعْ وَأَرْضُونَ سَبَعْ وَمَا فِيهِنَّ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا So from the signs of Allah, and these are the signs, which ones are these? Are these Kauniya or Shariya? Is the, is the night and the day, and the sun and the moon, and from His creation is the heavens and the earth. The seven heavens and the seven earths. And what is in between them? What's contained in the, se- in, the, in the heavens and the earth? Those are from the things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. So which ayats or which signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those? Are those koniya or shari'ya? Koniya, good. No. Because shari'ya, we said, is related to the Quran. The verses in the Quran. You know the ayat. And the evidence is for this also is not just what we see and what we believe in the ghayb, what we believe in the unseen, but also proof for this is one of the ayat shari'ya. For this is evidence for what we just talked about. With the Qulahu Ta'ala, here's the evidence. Women ayati layla wa nahara wa shamsu wa qamar. La tasjiru li shamsi. ولا ولا للقمر واشجر لله الذي خلقهن إن كنت إياه تعبدون. الله سبحانه وتعالى says in سورة فصلات. الله سبحانه وتعالى says this is the verse that shows us evidence for what we were just talking about. Allah says in this verse ومن آيات الليل والنهار and from His signs, meaning from Allah's signs, are the night and the day. وَشَمْتُ وَالْقَمَرُ And the sun and the moon. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse tells us some of His signs. Then He says, لَا تَسْجِدُوا لِشَمْسِ وَلَا لِلْقَمْرِ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates the fact. He says, don't worship my signs. لَا تَسْجِدُوا لِشَمْسِ وَلَا لِلْقَمْرِ Don't make prostration. Don't make sujood to the sun or the moon. Don't make prostration to the sun or the moon. Why does that seem strange for us? Because we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray. Who do you pray to when you go to the masjid? Yeah. You pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Funny. That seems strange to us. But many people in the world today and from before, the times before, they worship the sun. In many different uh, countries and localities in the world, there are individuals and tribes of, and groups of people who worship the sun and worship the moon and worship the stars and worship the trees and everything. They even say, as we say in the West, a lot of people say, Mother Nature did this. Mother Nature didn't do anything. It's from the Sunnah of the Law. Allah created everything. Allah created the nature which has a way that Allah created. So many people, they worship all those various things. 
and a law in this ayat, he says, Women ayati. First, he names his ayat. He said, And from his sign is the day and the night, and the sun, and the moon. And then he says, La tustu. Don't prostrate to the sun, nor the moon. Then he says, Then he orders us, Washjiru lillahi aladi khalaquhunna in kuntum yahu ta'abdun. Then he says for us, Worship Allah, the one who created them in Kuntum. If you, if it is Him, you truly worship. Right there, that shows us many benefits. For one, that gives us Tawheed, that shows us we worship. All our ibadah goes to who, Sina? Who should we worship? Allah. You should say that with strength. Allah. We worship Allah. Naam. First, that shows us we worship Allah. It also negates or makes it uh, uh, in a negative the fact that we do not worship anything besides Allah. None of His signs in His creation. Allah created everything, and we don't worship anything in His creation. We don't say, oh, Allah created the moon and it's so beautiful. I think I'll worship the moon. No, worship the one who created the moon. Oh, the stars are so beautiful. Who created the stars? Allah. Allah. So worship Allah. In kuntum iyahu ta'udun. That is making, um, that is verifying that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So that shows us we don't worship His creation. The signs in His creation, those signs would show us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists and He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. But rather we worship the one who created them. Wa qulu ta'ala. And in another ayah, إِنَّ رَبُّكُمُ اللَّهَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَامٍ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ يُغْشِي اللَّيْلَ النَّهَارَ يَطْلُبُ حَثِيثًا وَشَمْسُ وَقَمَرٌ وَالنُّجُومُ مُسَخِّرَاتٍ بِأَمْرٍ أَلَا لَهُ الْخَلْقُ وَالْأَمْرُ تَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, this is another verse which shows us that Allah is the creator of the heavens and earth and He has signs in His creation which show you to worship Him and Him alone. In this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, Verily, your Lord is Allah, the one who created the heavens and earth in six days. Then He rose above His throne. He made the day to cover the, uh, the night and the night to, to cover the day and the sun and the moon uh, and, and the stars. They run their course according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, commands. So they do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. That's not, Mother Nature didn't make anything. The nature and the things we observe in science are because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them that way. He's the creator of the heavens and earth. Allah uh, al khalq wa amr. Isn't the creation and all the affairs to Allah? Tabarakallah rabbil alameen. All praise and all blessings. Allah is the, 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 the one who gives blessings and He is the all praiseworthy. The Lord of the worlds. Allah uh, makes, uh, affirms for us that He is the creator of the heavens and earth and those signs are signs that He made. Those are according to His, his affairs. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed for us. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَرَبْهُ وَمَعْبُودُ And the law, or I mean, the Lord, or Lord, it means that which is worshipped. Lord, it means that which is worshipped. This is in, in the Arabic language. وَرَبْهُ وَمَعْبُودُ The Lord is the one who is worshipped. No one is worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, the shaykh went on to say, وَدَلِيلُ قَوْلُهُ وَتَعَالَى Then the evidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the Lord is the one who is worshipped, is in the Qur'an. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Kitab al-Kareem, in Surah al-Baqarah, Qala subhana, Ya ayuwa al-nas a'udhu rabbukum al-ladhi khalakukum wal-ladhina min qablakum la'allakum tattakum. Al-ladhi ja'ala lakum al-ard firashan wa s-samaa binaa wa anzala min al-samaa maa fa akhraja bihi min tamarat al-rizqan lakum fa la taj'alu lillahi indadin وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Beautiful, beautiful ayat in Surah Al-Baqarah. And we'll end right there. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is the evidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord and the one who's worthy of worship, the only one worthy of worship. Allah says, calling upon all of mankind, O, you man, uh, o mankind, worship your Lord. Allah is the Lord, Rabbil Alameen. He's the Lord of everything and everyone. Even if they don't accept it. Even if the disbelievers don't do it and, and they dislike it. O mankind, worship your Lord, the one who created you. And created those who came before you. So in order that you would fear Him. Allah created them so that they would fear Him. So we have to acknowledge that we have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we will fear Him. How do we fear Allah? By practicing His commandments. By practicing the Sharia. By practicing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands for us. That's how we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alladhi ja'ala lakum al-arfirashu wa sama'a bina'an The one who made for you the earth like a bed and the skies built uh, were built up with sama'i bina and wa anzala min as and he sent down from the sky water meaning rain Allah sent rain for us as sustenance fa akhraja bihi min thamarat rizqan lakum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent from the, the, the heavens he sent rain down for us as provision in order to provide fruit and vegetables and provisions for us then Allah, Allah gave us all this evidence. He said, hey, worship Allah alone. You know, worship me alone. I made the earth as a, a place of rest for you. I made the sky and, allow, and, and allowed for your, your provisions to, be, to come from the sky, your rain and so forth, to provide fruits and vegetables and things so you can eat. Then Allah said, فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Allah says, then, then do not associate partners with Allah. And you know this. Meaning you know that Allah is the creator of the heavens and earth. He's the only one worthy of worship. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is some of the beautiful things there related to, uh, to this book. But more importantly, affirming for us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. He is the Lord of the heavens and earth who we have to worship. Don't worship anyone. You don't worship your parents. You don't worship your president. You don't worship this person. You don't worship that person. You don't worship a cow. You don't worship a tree. But you worship Allah who created all of them. Uh, last point. Qala bin Qadir. This is one, uh, a very famous uh, alam who explained the Quran. He is a very famous tafsir of the Qur'an, an explanation of the Qur'an, among many other works in history and so forth, uh, uh, Ibn Kathir. قال Ibn Kathir رحمه الله تعالى الخالق لهذه الأشياء هو مستحق للإبادة That's the last point I want to make. Ibn Kathir said, after that verse, explaining that verse, he said, the one who created those things, he is the one worthy of worship. So that affirms for us worship because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you. So he's, he's worthy of worship. He's the only one worthy of worship. He created you. He created the sign. He created the sky as we mentioned in the verse which brings down the rain, which brings down the, the gives us uh, fruits and vegetables and the other things and feeds the animals that we eat when we eat meat. There's a life cycle. A whole cycle. Who created that cycle? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a creator of the heavens and earth. And as uh, Shaykh Ibn Kathir, Al Alam, Al Yani, Al Baha, you know, Al Alam, he mentioned Ibn Kathir, he said, Al Khalik lil Halim al Asha, wa Musaik lil Ibad. He said, The creator of all of those things is has the right to be worshipped alone. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from kulisu wa makru. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi 
وسلم